Hello everyone, it's Lady B and it is Sunday school time. Having some technical difficulties over here. I was just talking my little heart out and then the camera went blink. But to God be all the glory. We have an awesome Sunday school lesson on today. I know you saw the flyer that I posted um, before we got into this part of the video. I just wanted to encourage anyone that's out there that if you're in the Gwinnett County uh, area, the Atlanta metro area, and you'd like to come and join us, I'm going to be speaking at One Life Church in Lawrenceville, and I know they would be glad to have you come share with them. It's a mother-daughter dinner, and I pray that you would just pray for me that I will say what God has given me to say, and then I'll sit down, not give my opinion or anything else, but say what God has given me to say. We have an awesome lesson on today, and the name of it the title of the lesson is The Glory of the New Covenant. I um, kind of dragged my feet with this. I wanted to make sure that when I made this video, I was really in context. That's really big for me. I didn't want to just jump into the lesson, but I wanted to understand what was going on in this chapter three. So we're going to get it. This is an awesome lesson. We're going to get into the lesson and... We're going to pray, and then we're going to get to talking. All right? Lord, we bless you. We thank you. Uh, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for this precious salvation. Thank you for the new covenant that was ratified by your blood. We thank you. Lord, give me what to say, and I pray, God, that I only say what you give me to say, and that the words you give me will minister to all those who will listen hear and share in Jesus name we pray amen I also want to say thank you to everyone that likes and shares and 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 comments I really thank you for that this is a good lesson for those of us who have been called to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ now in our lesson today Paul is speak is, is speaking specifically about himself but there are going to be some principles in this lesson that we can all use as we stand boldly and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in our lesson on today, and you all know how I do it, I just give an overview. The golden text is, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. And this lesson is going to be addressing Paul's enemies that have been challenging his call, that have been challenging his apostleship. Now, I really think that it's important for us to look at the entire chapter in order to keep it in context. So when we look at the entire chapter, when we look at, first of all, verses one through six, we see that Paul is having a discourse with those who feel like he needs a letter of recommendation. And so he was like, do we got to go back to this again? Because when you look at first Corinthians chapter nine, he addresses it then too. So the, the, there were some Jews who were challenging Paul. Um, the scholars believe that they were Pharisees who, and it was a custom that they would go around with the letter of recommendation saying, this is who I am. This is why you should listen to me. And you know, this is what makes me important. So Paul is saying, do I really need to go around and carry a letter of recommendation? Are we going back to that? Now, what we, we discussed this before, one of the things we do know in second Corinthians that Paul's apostleship was being challenged. And so here in chapter three, he's saying, you really want a piece of paper? Because what he begins to say is, you all, those of you that are listening to these false prophets, these false, not prophets, but false apostles who are challenging my apostleship, you are the ones that are my evidence. They have a piece of paper. That's in the natural. That's carnal. But I have you. People are able to see you and see that the gospel that I preached, that you are received by faith, Corinthians, you see the change 
in your life. You know that you are new creatures in Christ. And so that's my commendation. And, you know, I want you all to think about this. There are a lot of people now, they, they're apostles, they're pastors, they're preachers, they're archbishops, they this and they're that. They are all of these things. However, there's nothing that, that nothing spiritual that supports it. There's, there's no Holy Ghost that confirms that, yes, I have sanctioned them. It's not just enough for man to put their hands on us and pour the oil on our head or however your denomination does it. We need Jesus to confirm the word, the message that he's given us. Paul says in verse number six, that God has made them able ministers of the new covenant of this new Testament, not of the letter, you know, not just words, but of the spirit for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And we know that, I mean, just preaching words brings no life. It brings no victory. It brings no deliverance. It's only the word of God with the Holy spirit. It's gotta be that combination. Okay. You know, a lot of stuff, but if the, if the anointing of God is not there, if the Holy ghost is not flowing through you, all it is, is letters. And how does it kill? All it does, like with the law, because they were touting the law. That's all the, the, the Pharisees had. They were touting the law. So these letters of, con, of, of commendation were to support what they knew about the law. But they were not preaching the new covenant. They were not preaching the finished work of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, they only had the letter of the law. And even Jesus taught that they did not have the spirit of God that brings life to the word, that brings the deliverance, that brings the healing, that brings the conviction of sin, that brings the, you know, I said deliverance, right? That brings the wholeness. And so Paul says, when all you have is the letter, there's nothing left. Because only through salvation do we have eternal life. The letter did not bring eternal life. That's what Paul is saying um, in verses one through six. And so then he picks up, and this is where our, le our, our lesson picks up, that Paul has already began to discuss the contrast between the old covenant with the law that only brought condemnation and the new covenant that was ratified through the blood of Jesus that brings life eternal. So the old covenant, it wasn't bad. God honored it. It's like we, we learn in Romans um, chapter five that it was by faith God honored Abraham and his faithfulness to what God had presented to him. That was by faith. And after Moses, everyone that kept the law by faith, that was counted to them for righteousness. But now we know that the Hebrew writer said that through Jesus Christ in this new covenant, we have a new and living or better way. And this is what Paul is talking about. And this is important for us because as believers, as believers, I was just reading something and I was praying this for myself that when I, when I present, let me present with boldness, but let it also be mixed with grace. A lot of times when we just present the letter, there's a lot of boldness there, but there's no grace in the letter of the law. There's no grace in just rules and standards and don't do this and don't do that. There's no grace in that. When the grace comes in, it's, this is why we do it. I'm not saying all the time that the rules are wrong because we've thrown out a lot of rules when it's come to church and look at the mess that we have. But I think it's important. Why do we say you shouldn't go here? Why do we say you shouldn't dress it this like this? Why do we say this? You shouldn't keep this kind of company. Why do we say those things? Grace is what says this is why. And that's what we find here. So Paul begins, he says, but if the ministration of death written in graven and stones was glory, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How should not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness um, exceed in glory. So what was the ministration of death? The law, this time of the law 
Why was it considered death? Not death in a bad way, but remember the law does not say all the law was, was a schoolmaster. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Don't have false um, idols. Go to, go to church on the Sabbath. That's all the law did. It was, it was a schoolmaster. So the law, like Paul said, I didn't even know I had sinned if it had not been for the law. So once the law is there, it is a constant reminder of my sin. And so Paul is saying it's not that the law was bad. Because if you remember the lawgiver, when you look at Exodus chapter 34, the lawgiver, when he was in the presence of God, the one who was given Moses the law, his face shined so from the glory of the Lord that he had to put a veil on his face. I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. And so he was not, Paul is not saying that the law was bad because the law came from God and the law served its purpose. And that was to help the children of Israel to know how to live. Because remember the children of Israel, their purpose was to bring man back to God, to be the light, to show people how to get to God. But they were, they did not keep up with that. And so, and so Paul is saying here that although the, the ministry of, he calls it condemnation, the ministry of death, although it did have a splendor, it did have a glory. It does not compare to this new ministration, this new covenant that we have through Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is saying. This, this new ministry, and I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. So what is Paul saying? You know, it's just like if you're in a room and you have um, your, flashlight, your flashlight on your phone, it's going to illuminate. And you know, most of these flashlights on our phone, they're very bright. But then when you turn on all the lights in the room, you won't even be able to tell that the flashlight on the phone is on unless you're actually looking at the phone. Because there's a greater light that has dispelled the darkness. And so your flashlight, even though it's on and even though it's shining, it, it's not bright enough. And so that's what Paul is saying about the old administration or the old ministration versus the new. That when the new came, it was brighter, it was better than the old. And I know some of us, we really get into some discussions about whether we are supposed to keep the law or not. Which parts of the law are we supposed to keep? I think it's important for us to remember that. When the new covenant was ratified through Jesus Christ, it outshined the old. The new outshined the old. All right. So seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So what is Paul saying? Here we go again. I know you all are challenging my apostleship because you feel like I don't have flowery words. And so I must not be an apostle. I don't flatter. So I must not be an apostle. I I'm working. I'm, I'm making tents so that I won't be a, a burden to the people. You know, all of these things people were saying against Paul, but Paul is saying that he said, I'm, I'm coming to you with plain speech. And you know why this speech is plain? Because you are able to understand and grasp what I'm saying through Jesus Christ. When Moses was being given the law, because of the hardness of people's hearts, they could not receive the glory that was on his face. So Moses had to cover his face. However, 
we know that that glory did not last. And Paul is saying that because, let's go back this again, verse 14, but their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. So Paul is saying when you spend all this time still reading the Old Testament, the veil is over your face. You're still missing what God is saying. You can't see what God is saying. And you know, they could not receive what Moses was saying because of the hardness of their heart, because of their sin, because of that idolatry. And so Paul is saying, even now, your eyes, your eyes would still have this veil over it through sin and not receiving the truth of the finished work that Jesus Christ has come and he has fulfilled the law. He's fulfilled it. He didn't do away with it, but he met all of his requirements and all of his expect all of his expectations. So that when we come to Jesus Christ and our hearts are changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, the law, the rules, the standards of God are written on our hearts. We don't have to read them on tablets or have a big, big notebook of all the rules. Make sure I did rule 231. Check. 555 check. No, it's written on the tables of our heart. And so when we come to Jesus Christ, you know how to live. I know how to live because the spirit of God will lead us and guide us into all truth. And so this is what he's saying. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Not on their face, but it's upon their heart. Because the law has been completed through Jesus Christ. And so when you stay with the law and you, re you refuse the new covenant, the new agreement, the new contract, the new covenant, when you reject that, the new ministration where there's no more animal sacrifices, that Jesus has taken care of all of that, that God, his wrath has been um, satisfied through Jesus Christ. You know, all those words, the propitiation, he, he, Jesus, God is angry with sin, but he's not angry with believers because Jesus has paid that. He's paid that price. We have been justified. That's a legal term, meaning we now are counted sinless through Jesus Christ. I want us to remember that we are counted sinless through Jesus Christ. So yes, in the flesh, we still do things, but our position because of Jesus Christ, our position, our position, thank God for the righteousness of God that covers us. Because if you take the cloak of righteousness off, you still see the dirty parts of me. You still see the things that I'm struggling with. But what God is looking at is the Jesus that I have been cloaked with, that I've been clothed with. And I'm so glad about that because I yet have to qualify for heaven based upon my own works. See, that's a, this, the letter of condemnation, the ministry of, of death. Because based upon the ministry of death, I will never, ever, ever qualify for heaven. But based upon the new and living way, the one that is glorious and, and splendid, and it doesn't pass away, this glory that doesn't fade, because of Jesus Christ, I am going to heaven. Not because I got everything right, but I'm going to heaven because of Jesus. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. When it, the people, whoever, you, me, when I turn to the Lord, when you turn to the Lord, whatever had my eyes covered, whatever blinded me and hardened my heart to Jesus Christ, that is removed. And now I can receive the word of God, the gospel of truth, the splendor of the new and living way, the splendor of the New Testament. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know, I've heard this scripture so many times coming up and we always said it at testimony service and we always said, you know, basically this gives us freedom to praise the Lord. But what this is saying is where Jesus is, where we have accepted through the power of the Holy Spirit, the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are now free 
from the burden of the law. We are freed from the bondage of the law. Remember, all the law can do is beat us down and tell us how bad we are. Tell us how much sin we've committed. We're never going to, and it's going to always remind you, see, you sinned it again. You sinned again. See, you did it wrong. See, you did it wrong. That's what the law does. But grace and truth says through Jesus Christ, Christ. I no longer am bound to sin and I am free. I am free. I have the victory through Jesus Christ. I am no longer bound to sin, but I am free and I am clothed in the righteousness of God. I can rejoice because my sins have been forgiven. My sins have been washed away. I have been ransomed by the lamb. I have been justified. God is no longer mad at me. I am secure in him. He loves me. I am in his hand. He's going to keep me from falling. All of those things make the new ministry, the new covenant, more splendid than the old. The old, the glory passed away. The new, the glory will never fade. The beauty of the new way, the splendor and the glory of the new way that says, I get to be like Jesus. I may not look like Jesus now, but he is transforming me to be like him. Because look what it says. But we are with open face beholding as in the glass the glory of the Lord. Now, again, open face, meaning there's no more veil. There's no more veil. Even though I may not be where I need to be in God, there's no more veil. I can behold the glory and the splendor of the Lord, you know, at the level he allows us to see it. The, the splendor and the glory of the Lord because of salvation. I now and I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm a child of the King and I can behold my Lord and my savior. I can behold him because even the Hebrew says he is my brother. He and Jesus even told the disciples, I call you friends. So we have this friend, brother, Lord, savior relationship. And I can go to him and I don't have to hide and I don't have to be afraid. And like the Hebrew writer said, I can go boldly before the throne of grace. Now it talks about seeing through a glass. Now they did not have mirrors like we are. So it may not have been as clear. So we don't really know, you know, what we're supposed to look like. That's what it says in first John. What we do know is when we behold him, we're going to be like him. So even though I am seeing through this glass, the glory of the Lord, I am being changed. So when I look at the word of God and I'm submitting myself to the word of God, I start seeing myself going from glory to glory, meaning I'm going higher in God. I'm getting stronger in God. My language is changing. My mind is changing. My desire is changing. My heart has changed. I'm going from glory to glory, glory. I want more of God. I want more of his word. I want to be in fellowship. I don't like sin. It breaks my heart when I sin. I'm going from glory to glory. But we all with open face beholding as in and glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. That image that we see when we read our word, the spirit of God is changing us into that image of righteousness, that image of holiness and sanctification. So I want to encourage all of you that are preachers and teachers or carriers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not compare yourself. Do not feel bad if, if, if man has not put his stamp of approval on you. Now, I got to say this. Do not disrespect your leadership. Do not go against the body that God has assigned you to. Don't get grown. My husband always say that. Don't get grown. Some of us are too grown. Can't nobody tell us nothing. And we just running off into the sunset and doing what we want to do. And now we have a disaster and a mess on our hands. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you be what God has called you to be. You obey God and wherever you are, if that's where you're supposed to be and that ministry is called of God, you submit to that ministry and know this, if God has called you, he is going to open up that door for you. So, you know, I, I, I really got to say this. I know that there are a lot of 
bad churches out there, but there are also some good churches. And there are some churches where the pastors and the leaders, they love those that are coming up and trying to learn the ways of God and find their place in God. And they're molding them, they're shaping them and they're developing them and they're giving them opportunities to spread their wings and to learn and to grow so they can fly off and do what God's called them to do. So please don't think I am not for these. Everybody got a ministry. I just don't think that that's of God. Because we should all be able to take our ministries within a particular body and fellowship and get the work of the Lord done. But I want to also encourage you, encourage you, don't wait for somebody to call you pastor or apostle or teacher. Know this, that this message of our Lord Jesus Christ, it has been entrusted to all of us. You can share the gospel at work. You can share the gospel in the store. You can sell the, share the gospel in the hospital, in the library. There's more to this gospel of Jesus Christ than just standing in a pulpit and wearing a robe. We are supposed to be the ministers of this new covenant to the world. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be going out there. Too many of us are huddled in a pack. And who knows? Maybe God wants you to make sure that your fellowship is active in evangelism. So, you know, that's all I say. I have to say, I hope this encourages you. I, I just want to remind you again, be like Paul. Know that what you have been given is the true unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ and share that gospel everywhere you can go. Share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors, share it with your, your with your, with your, with your family. Know that this gospel, the glory is eternal. It's not going to fade away. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for joining me on today. I pray that you are making plans to go to Sunday school. Or like I said, I know some people use these lessons for Bible study. But I pray that you are being faithful in your study of the word of God. Thank you again for all your comments. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Keep sharing. Keep commenting. Keep praying for me. And I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Be blessed.